It's like either they're trolling people or I am like dumbfounded that uh this sort of stuff <laughs> this sort of stuff actually happens. This Pentagon develops microchip that detects COVID under your skin. This is medical researchers at Pentagon have created a microchip that will detect COVID-19 when inserted under the skin. It's like relax, relax, conspiracy theorists. It says they're not being disseminated via the vaccines. Don't worry about it. We just want to plant it right here. We just want it in your hand. If we, or we'll put it right here in the forehead, right? Just like the book of Revelation. Just like the book of Revelations. I wonder are these people like trolling? But here it is. The revolutionary technology was developed by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, which operates under the Pentagon umbrella. According to Sunday night's broadcast of 60 Minutes, the top secret unit was launched during the Cold War to study emerging technologies for military use. Among them, innovations to defend soldiers from biological weapons, it says the Army. Retired Army Colonel Dr. Matt Hepburn, an infectious disease physician, revealed the microchip is not in widespread use outside the Defense Department. It says it could detect uh, COVID-19 in an individual well before uh, a patient z- a patient zero spawns an outbreak. As in a 60 minutes interview, Pentagon researchers claim they've uh, created a micro- my microchip that will detect COVID-19 when inserted under the skin. Yeah, like I said, it's right there, right in the hand. And then right before you go into the supermarket, you just scan yourself in. And if you don't have it, neither can you buy it or sell. <laughs> so we challenge the research community to come up with solutions. That may sound like science fiction. This is according to a DARPA. So, this take pandemics off the table. It says Hepburn compared their dioxin microchip to a car's check engine alert. Despite conspiracy theories claims that Microsoft Bill Gates is using vaccines. They're like, that's stupid. My, Bill Gates isn't putting nanochips into the into the vaccine. We're actually going to give you a chip. <laughs> and they're like, stupid conspiracy theorists. It says 60 minutes. And really, I mean, it's not conspiracy it's not conspiracy theorists for those who believe in who those who believe in the Bible, like overwhelmingly, like most people have some understanding of the book of revelation. They've heard of stuff like this. They've heard of the end times, the wars, the global food, the global famines, the one, the push for the one world government. And of course the Bible always portrayed this, these events as taking place in a time period. Of course, that would be, in relation to what the Bible referred to as the end times. And so, of course, they want to downplay all of this because overwhelmingly at this point in time in history, a lot of people have an understanding of the scriptures. Whether they Now, whether they live that way is a completely different point, right? Whether a person actually lives in accordance with the way the Bible says in terms of morality, etc., is a different story. But overwhelmingly, not maybe one or two generations like for my generation or the generation prior to me, were very much into the scriptures. And so a lot of their children have an understanding. Now, maybe the young people of today's generation might not have much of an understanding of, of biblical prophecy. And of course, this was talked about extensively, about the mark of the beast being in either in your right hand or in your hand or in your forehead for the purpose of neither buying or nor, nor being able to sell. At a time point where we're seeing that exact same thing take place so of course it raises the ears and the antennas of those who are very much familiar with this sort of stuff now granted whether you believe that or not this should be quite alarming to individuals where the government is literally like hey if you want we can put a chip in your hand and you're like what maybe these people spend too much time watching sci-fi makes you wonder are all these different sci-fi movies like for example the matrix were they actually just movies or were they kind of trying to red pill people into like, maybe it's time for you people to wake up <laughs> from, uh, from your blue pilled sleep. It goes on to say, it says, nor is it being administered via shots. It says chip is not work to track. <laughs> they always say this. They always say that they're like, don't worry. We're going to implant the chip into your body, but don't worry. We're not going to track you. And they always say this. They say the exact same thing about the apps, the, the COVID, COVID app, the Excelsior app, the green passport. They're like, don't worry. We're not going to track you. We already do, but don't worry. This won't add any more enhanced tracking. Uh, it goes on to say, nor is it being administered via shots, as some 
would be Twitter sleuths have pondered. And this is the guy right here talking about the microchip. And he says, uh, it's a sensor. As Hepburn told. Now, can you imagine that for a virus that has a, like a 99% survival rate in most people under the age of like 70, right? For most people under the age of 70, though, this virus has a 99%. This, the CDC, the, the World Health Organization have all shown this information to be true. This isn't like some, you know, statistics that your people are just pulling out of their ass. This is information that has been released by their own official bodies, right? So it's obvious that this has nothing to do with the disease because overwhelmingly most people survive. It's like, shoot, most people don't even know that they have it. And you, I even show those different ladies, like that lady in Colombia who was 104 years old and she had it twice. And then you had that lady, the nun, uh, I think she was from Italy, uh, who was 116 when she got it and she passed and she's now 117 as a, as a survivor of the disease. And so this becomes more and more obvious that none of this has anything to do with the disease because you wouldn't need to force people to get vaccinated, to wear masks, because they would see it with their own eyes. Observable reality would tell people that I need to wear, I need to wear a mask because people are dropping left and right. But that isn't the case, especially as more information comes out and things get exposed about people who gunshot victims were labeled as COVID or individuals who died of a heart attack or died of, or people who were on hospice, et cetera. And so as this stuff gets exposed, all, all it does is, is, is it makes people realize that what you're doing has nothing to do with the actual virus. I mean, there was even that insane, uh, that video that I talked about from St. Vincent where they were like, well, if you didn't get the vaccine, then you're not going to get uh, evacuated from an island where a volcano is erupting. And this just goes to show you that it's, it's not even logical, nor is it scientific, nor is it medically related, but it's all related, of course, to uh, control everything that revolves around it. And as the system of thing, of course, comes to an end, these individuals are going to try to do everything to hold on to their authority, even if it is by force. That's why the Bible foretold that during these, during these time periods or during the period of the end where you would see all these things, where there would be a great tribulation that would take place across the earth. And we're seeing this, we're seeing acts like this. It's so weird because it's like, what are the chances of all these different political bodies from different language groups, from different forms of government, from different cultures, literally all coming together for the exact same purpose of expressly controlling people's it's like not even, it's like over multiple countries and continents and areas, different cultures, different cultural backgrounds. And it's like, they're literally all unified under this exact same mentality. And of course it causes people to wonder, it causes me to wonder. I'm very surprised when I, when I see this sort of stuff and that people just kind of, they kind of just shrug it off as, as if it's normal. And it just goes to show you how, just like, just like Jesus said, just like in the days of Noah, so it will be in the, pre in, in the day of the Son of Man. For people will be eating and drinking and carrying on till the flood came and sweeps, and sweeps them all away. So, that, so it will be in the day of the Son of Man. It says, the microchip embedded in a tissue-like gel is designed to continuously test the chip's recipient's blood for the presence of the virus. It says, once COVID-19 is detected, the chip alerts the patient to conduct a rapid blood test. How the hell does it do that? which it can be self-identified to confirm the positive results. It says the dialysis machine here attempted to filter the virus out of the patient's blood. And I kind of wonder how that works because typically it will filter out, typically it will filter out proteins, but viruses embed themselves into your cells. They take over your cell. So how is it going to filter out the protein, the proteins that are already embedded into your cells. Once the virus starts to spread, it just basically implants itself into your cell and it takes over it like a factory. Just basically just imagine a bunch of people, you know, swarming into the factory, taking over the factory and then mass producing. I have no idea how this is like actually going to work. I'm, I'm actually going to have to look up and read some of this information because we can have that information in three to five minutes. 
It says, as you truncate, as you, as you truncate that time, as you diagnose and treat, it says what you do is you stop the infection and it's tracks. And it's for what purpose? The virus has a 99, well over a nine, even according to the CDC. The CDC even stated this when back when Trump was in office and they said, you know, they were pointing 250,000 deaths, they're all on, you know, they're all on your hands, that blood is on your hand, et cetera. And then the CDC came out and said, well, once we look at all the data, it was only really about 6% of the people. And then they quickly came out and they were like, whoa, whoa, we can't go out there and say all that. We need to some, we need to walk this shit back. And that's where they were like, oh, these people are misinterpreting the CDC. And it's like, you know, these people just released, they just released the data. And then if the data says anything of the opposite, well, then someone walks, someone has to come out and say, well, you're misinterpreting the data. And it's like, how do you misinterpret the data? As there is a difference between someone who actually dies of a, of a related virus and then someone who dies with that virus in them. Just like right now, you have E. coli in your stomach. There are numerous other forms of different bacteria that reside within your body. It's the normal flora. There's a difference between someone who had E. coli and died of a of sepsis related to E. coli and then someone who died and has E. coli in their gut, which you normally do. And many people, of course, even there was an article way back. I mean, it was back in like, I think, October of 2019, where they were like wondering where when, when COVID actually got started. And you can look this up where the, the the blood banks they were like oh we were actually finding covid in the blood of people who had donated back in like Octo october november of 2019 showing that the virus had already been in america long before it actually spread into areas like china maybe i'll look it up and i'll i'll, I'll show it across the screen this this was back in like 2000 i think it was like back in 2019 it was either october or november from 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 uh, blood banks this is a signal to reveal technology that can allow a standard dialysis machine to remove COVID-19 from the blood using a customized filter. This blood is passed through the machine where it is detoxed, then pumped back into the body in a continuous stream until the body is rid of the virus. This is the military uh, spouse dubbed patient 16 survived a severe bout of illnesses, including organ failure and septic shock. And again, they don't tell you the history of the patient, how old was the person, uh, it goes on to say, it says the treated lasted four days after which a pacing 16 had a full, had a full recovery. And was that, was that because the person was sick as a relation to, to the virus or there was the person sick from something else? They don't give you any of this information, but this information is actually quite important. How old is the person? Did the person have any comorbidities? Were they shown, were they actually symptomatic for the virus or did they come in for something else? I've had numerous patients that have come into the hospital for shortness of breath, but it's related to cardiac because the person, the patient had fluid overload because they have a weak heart. And so you end up with, um, you end up with edema in your, like in your feet typically. And the person gets pulmonary, you can have like pulmonary edema related to uh, just having a poor, a poor heart, which most people end up with a poor heart at some point before they die. The heart, just like, just like a car, everything starts to break down. And one of the, one of the, uh, the mechanisms of the body that breaks down is, are the organs. And so you can have shortness of breath for multiple reasons. You can have shortness of breath because maybe you skip dialysis and now you've got, you've got pulmonary edema, right? You've got fluid in the lungs. You can have a weak heart. There's numerous things that can cause shortness of breath. It's not always that just because a patient tests positive that that's what brought them into the hospital or that their shortness of breath or uh, fever is related to the particular virus. But this is why this sort of information is important. It's important to ask these deeper questions. How old is the patient? Did the patient have comorbidities? What was the chief complaint? What was the diagnosis upon being admitted to the hospital? It says, uh, patient got re uh, Pentagon researchers continue to study COVID-19 and much of their research has been critical in stopping the pandemic. It was like, what are you talking about? All the... the there's including new methods of detecting and developing antibodies. And it was like I said in a previous, in a previous video that this is far too lucrative in every way, shape, or form in terms of control and fear-mongering, financially speaking. Uh, this is way too lucrative for these individuals to be like, all right, we're going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to stop with this whole nonsense. This will continue to go on until people realize and that it's time to stop and that the people demand it more than likely is going to take force. It's just a reality. 
uh, is that it's going to take some measure of force on the people's part to put an end to these governments and their and their desire for power. It's just a reality. Unfortunately, this is the this is where we're at. Because honestly, as this fraction of six to twelve months previously acquired, they eventually hope to close the gap between new disease and detection and vaccine. It's just like, hey, yeah. Moving forward, they're like, yeah, we're just going to put a, a chip in your hand and we'll be able to detect every disease, you know, going out there. And people people will wholeheartedly and foolishly sign up for this. It just amazes me that this is where we're at. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. I'll leave the article in the link for those who, of course, want to read it on their own. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.